Hello and welcome to the Suffolk New College Guide to Paper 1. So your English exam will take place on the 5th of June and you're going to have five questions to answer all about creative reading and writing. You're going to get an unseen text to start off with that will be from 40 to 50 lines long. Okay, so what do you need to know for question one? Question one is worth four marks. You need to spend no longer than five minutes to answer that question. You need to ensure that you've got four distinct answers. Make sure they're really different, you haven't repeated yourself. But the good news is you can directly quote from the text. Okay, so you can just use short quotes within the line numbers that are indicated in the question. Okay, so question one, nice and easy, designed to settle you down, four marks in the bag. So, question two is the language features question. This is one of the questions that most of the students are more confident on. You've been looking at language features for a long time. So, question two is worth eight marks. It's ten minutes, there's a maximum amount of time to spend on that question. And you're going to be asked to find language features and powerful words and phrases within a given section. You'll have certain line numbers to find those from. So, you want to use your point evidence explain technique in your answer. In your point, you want to use technical terminology. That could be a rose map word, repetition, onomatopoeia, etc. Or it could be a word class. They've used an adjective or they've used a vibrant verb. And then in your evidence, you want a good quotation, a powerful quotation from that section that you can explain well. And then in the effect, you want to say what effect it has on the reader. What does it make them think about? What does it make them question? What do you associate with that word? This week, where we were looking at the fairy palaces in the Rosabelle text, we were looking at the associations of that, that it was magical, that it was enchanted, perhaps that it was unobtainable for Rosabelle to have the jewellery from those shops. Okay, so if you can really develop the effect, that's going to boost your score up through those levels. Okay, so moving on to question three now. Question three is about structure. And for some students, this has been a new idea, a new place of study. Okay, remember, no language features words in this question. It's your structure words. So you're looking for focus at the beginning, shifts in focus. You're looking for dialogue. You're looking for narrative perspective. Is it in first person or third person? Is there some dialogue? Nice and easy to spot. So you want to find and identify these structural features. And then again, it's the point evidence explain technique. So in your point, you need to include your technical terminology. The focus at the beginning is. The dialogue is. Okay? You're going to say what the structural feature is. You then need to find a quotation to back up the fact that that structural feature is there. So you have your quotation. And then in the explain part, you're going to explain why it has been used and what is the effect on the reader. So, for example, the, in the first paragraph where you could be looking at the focus at the beginning, that could be to establish a person, a place, and therefore the reader gets to know and understand what those are. So, remember, it's eight marks for this question. Again, I, ideally, three point evidence explain paragraphs, but you don't want to spend any longer than ten minutes on this question. So, after your ten minutes, you move on to question four. So, question four is worth 20 marks. This is a big chunk of marks for this paper. This is the evaluation question, where you're given a statement and you're asked to explain to what extent you agree with that statement, okay? So, because it's 20 marks, you're looking at 20 to 25 minutes, maybe five or six PEEs if you can manage it. So, it's an evaluation question. You need to say to what extent you agree. My advice would be to agree with the statement. You've only got 20, 25 minutes to prove whether you agree with the statement or not. And the person you're writing about is a published writer. They've done really, really well at English. And probably you don't have enough time to disagree with the statement and find enough evidence. So what are the assessment criteria for this question? Well, you need to think about evaluating how well 
the writer has used certain methods, and it's the methods that are sometimes forgotten from this question. Again, you can talk about any language features, you can talk about any structural features, you can talk about sentence forms, you can talk about tone, and you can talk about quotations that you've used on questions two and three if they're from within the line numbers which are specified for the question. Again, you also need to think about the effect on the reader as well. So you can use point evidence explain technique, but you want to use some positive adverbs perhaps. That's a good tip there for evaluating. The writer has effectively used repetition. The writer has successfully used onomatopoeia. Effectively, successfully, impressively, creatively, those positive adverbs indicate that you are evaluating how well the writer has used that technique. Okay, so you've made it to the last question, question five. This is worth 40 marks, half of the marks for the whole paper. That's broken down as 24 for content and organisation and 16 for technical accuracy. This is where you need to be really careful with your spelling and show off all the different punctuation that you can use. So you're going to be asked to create a longer piece of writing, of creative writing. It could be based on an image, you'll be given an image, and also you will have a statement, and you can choose which one you want to do. It's possible that you could be asked to do two narrative, have two narrative possibilities, or two descriptive possibilities, or one of each. But you need to ensure that you're confident with descriptive and narrative, because it is a possibility that you won't get a choice of descriptive or narrative. Okay, so when you're writing descriptive writing, you want to think about writing for all those senses, you also want to think about your figurative language. Get those roadmap techniques in there. It is on the assessment criteria and you are now really practicing imaginative and creative writing to impress the examiner and show them everything you can do. If you're thinking about doing the narrative one, try not to cram too much action in. Remember, you've got your time that's left. You might have 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how long you've taken on your reading questions. But you want it to be well developed all the way through. You use your paragraphs really well. Think about an interesting structure and really go for it with all those different language techniques and really engage your examiner in your creativity. Okay, so... That's paper one down, um, 80 marks. Looking at approximately 40 marks there for that grade four or above, you really have got it.